Sometimes described as the sewer of the Industrial Revolution, New York's Newtown Creek is perhaps one of the most disgusting waterways in America. This is the site of the country's largest oil spill. With up to 30 million gallons of oil leaching the soil from processing facilities that once lined the water. And it might be a lost cause. Environmental activist Christopher Swain has perhaps the most intimate insight on the water here. And at the risk of being too graphic, he really lays out the cards when recalling his decision to swim in this toxic basin willingly. Remarking on the smell of the chemicals, stating it smelled like cinnamon toast, the fumes from the gas and oil and the sulfur smell stood out. Swain said he was ready for the gas and oil, but he wasn't prepared for the visible sight of sewage. He explained that every time you flush a toilet in Lower Manhattan, the water is piped to the Newtown Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, and when it's raining, they can't handle the load, leaving the activists to quote, swim right through it. In fact, 22 combined sewage overflows are draining directly into the creek, discharging some 1.2 billion gallons annually. So how did things end up this way? How did this overlooked estuary become such a disaster? Surprisingly, some say that the damage goes back to the times of Native Americans who used the area as an energy center. Be that as it may, the fathers of the Industrial Revolution sent the situation into overdrive. So join me as we discover the story of Newtown Creek. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. The geological history of the area surrounding Newtown Creek and Queens, Brooklyn, and the entire Long Island region traces back to the retreating glaciers over 18,000 years ago. Before this period, the glaciers covered New York City for over a million years. As the glaciers began to melt away, they left behind deposits of sediment that eventually gave rise to the landscape we see today. For instance, the highlands and ridges bordering Newtown Creek were formed by the accumulation of glacial debris known as moraines. These mounds are a mix of sand, boulders, and gravel, resulting in a large hill-like formation that defined the surrounding topography. The influence of these ancient glaciers can still be seen in the region today. For Native Americans, Newtown Creek was a critical source of peat, an organic layer of soil made up of decomposed matter that can be used as a fuel. But when the colonists arrived, demand surged, and land disruption was furthered by harvesting lumber from the hills and flatlands surrounding the creek. Dutch explorers first surveyed and mapped this waterway between 1613 and 1614, just a few short years after Henry Hudson sailed into the harbor. According to the EPA, historically, Newtown Creek drained the uplands of western Long Island and flowed through the wetlands and marshes. However, due to heavy industrial development and government activities dating from the 1800s, formerly wet areas have been filled. Newtown Creek has been channelized and its banks have been stabilized with bulkheads and riprap. Meaning the historical development had resulted in changes like Newtown Creek from a natural drainage condition to one governed largely by engineered and industrial systems from the 1800s. Back then, over 50 industrial facilities were located along its banks, including oil refineries, chemical plants, sawmills, and coal and lumber yards. This would also be the time that the first wooden bridges were built to cross the creek, allowing for better access via horse and wagon. The Long Island Railroad tracks were also laid along the northern shore of Newtown Creek in the 1850s and were meant to move people and freight from eastern points in Long Island along the creek to Long Island City in western Queens. This connection brought materials from the eastern headwaters of Newtown Creek to the East River, where they could be moved onto larger ships or crossed over into Manhattan on barges. This was also the main rail line connecting Long Island to all points north, including Canada and New England. Naturally, with so much development, the creek was heavily trafficked, with commercial vessels transporting raw materials, fuel, oil, chemicals, and metals. Even back then, the area was frequently abused by criminal dumping. 
For example, the city began discharging untreated sewage directly into the water in 1856. You see, as New York was experiencing a population boom, the infrastructure couldn't keep up. A massive sewer system was being installed in other parts of the city, yet Brooklyn elected to dump all of its raw sewage directly into the headwater of the creek, enhancing the cholera pandemic. Apparently, the smell of the area was so unbearable that the neighboring residents and the Board of Health were complaining to the authorities. Brooklyn was building its own sewer system, but the federal government's interest was to make the waterway more suitable for heavy shipping traffic. Hence, the dumping issues were not prioritized and the city only focused on making the creek wider and deeper, with the banks flattened and prepared for heavy industry. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers ultimately designed the modern shape of the waterway very much as we know it today. In the 19th century, there was also a variety of business here outside of your more chemical-based operations, such as the Chelsea Fiber and Jute Mill, which manufactured maritime rope. Wales Creek saw the manufacturing of sperm whale oil by Ambrose Kingsland, one of the wealthiest men in the 1830s New York City. However, these types of factories weren't exactly suitable for the environment. Apparently, the pollution was so bad that fires raged every few years due to the unregulated byproducts poured into the water. And yet, this was nothing compared to what was in store, the petroleum industry. By 1912, the New York Times reported that Newtown Creek had a grander traffic scale than that of the Mississippi River. In fact, $3 billion of cargo passed through here annually. Around this time, oil tycoons turned the area into one massive refinery, occupying most of the space on both sides of the riverbank. The New York Kerosene and Gaslight Company was located on the Queen side of the waterway and was the largest facility of its type in the country at the time. At this plant, steam was used to extract hot burning oil from coal. Charles Pratt of Pratt University took over the plant, renaming it the Queens County Oil Works of Astral Oil, and ultimately, Standard Oil, under the direction of John Rockefeller, took over the stake. By 1911, Rockefeller controlled 91% of the country's oil production, only to ultimately be broken up by antitrust laws. Throughout the first half of the 20th century, the Standard Oil Company of New York continued its operation here, rebranding from vacuum oil to mobile oil. Other businesses here were still booming as well. By the 1930s, freight movement throughout the creek reached more than 5.5 million tons. Most was connected to the refining of raw materials, animal rendering, or other organic materials. In many ways, World War II was the creek's climax as it played an important role due to its strategic location and the industries operating along its banks. The area was home to several shipyards that produced the famous Liberty ships, cargo ships used by the United States during the war. The oil refineries played a crucial role in producing fuel for the Allied forces. In fact, the creek was so crucial for fuel production that German U-boats heavily targeted it, but fortunately to no avail. What's more, due to its strategic importance, the creek was also a target for espionage during the war. German spies were known to operate in this area, attempting to gather information about the shipyards and refineries. Then, in 1942, a massive fire broke out at the Standard Oil Refinery on the banks of Newtown Creek. The fire was so intense that it could be seen from Manhattan and caused over $3 million in damages. However, refining would slow by the end of the war, and by the second half of the century, it stopped altogether. Other businesses also slowed, such as shipping, which was no longer possible at scale with the development of much larger container ships requiring deep harbors. In 1966, primary refining facilities were taken over by the then New Jersey oil giant known as ExxonMobil. It was at this moment that the area's pollution was noticed. Perhaps it was just a matter of bad luck or coincidence, but around the same time that a New Jersey-based oil company took over a New York-based oil company, the local authorities discovered the Greenpoint oil spill. New York State was able to prove that up to 30 million gallons of petroleum were spilled in the area and sued ExxonMobil for damages. Exxon has been working to clean up the site ever since. 
To be clear, this mess was not the result of a single spill. There were many oil spills and leaks over the decades, but to understand why this is the case, we really need to understand the complex network of subterranean pipes, tunnels, vaults, and river logistics. Newtown Creek is divided into five tributaries, Dutch Kills, Maspeth Creek, Whale Creek, East Branch, and English Kills. An epicenter for this is the area around Apollo Street, which was the dividing point between the two primary plants, Sona Fleming and Locust Hill. On the Queen side was the so-called Buckeye Pipeline, which connected a massive network both above ground and below. As the years passed, some of these pipelines had unnoticed leaks, especially the abandoned parts of the network. Perhaps making matters worse was what many of these pipes connected to, storage tanks, many of which were not properly maintained. Another source of oil pollution came from spills off the barges that would service the many tanks along the riverbank. Even today, it's not uncommon to see oil tanker river barges being pushed around by tugboats as storage is still relatively popular. As the oil arrives by barge and then is shipped out by hundreds of nearby trucks, Another huge source of pollution was caused by the manufactured natural gas. This process was a surprise to me as I had always assumed natural gas was somehow piped out directly from the ground when in many cases, the gas is produced by heating coal or fracked oil in a low oxygen furnace. The result of this process is the natural gas that is released from the fuel source and this is what we often use in our kitchen stove. It's a dirty process, leaving the waterway riddled with coal tar, a terrible toxin. Considering that, in 1967, Governor Nelson Rockefeller commissioned a new wastewater pollution control plant on the grounds of the then abandoned Greenpoint refineries. Then in 1972, the Nixon administration passed the Clean Water Act, carefully regulating all materials discharged into navigable waters so at this point in the story, the cleanup efforts really seemed promising. Still, the more authorities attempted to resolve the pollution issue, the more they discovered just how bad it was. The ultimate low point, perhaps, was when a Coast Guard helicopter spotted an oil slick on the creek's surface in 1978. The oil was seeping out of the ground in Greenpoint from the bulkheads at Apollo Street for what turned out to be the largest terrestrial oil spill in US history, with over 17 million gallons covering 55 acres as it made its way towards the creek. This event brought national headlines, and in 1980, Congress passed the Comprehensive Environmental Response Act, which was a tax on chemical and petroleum industries. By 2010, Newtown Creek was designated a Superfund site by the Federal United States Environmental Protection Agency. The cleanup should be completed by 2035 at the expense of billions of dollars. With such a wretched history, you might be wondering what the creek's legacy is in modern day. Well, let's have a look. When approaching the estuary from water level, you'll notice abandoned pillars of a once grand pier on the south bank. On the north bank is the Luminescence Park, perhaps the greatest departure from an industrial past. As you enter the waterway, you probably wouldn't guess that it possesses a health risk. The sight of modern skyscrapers lining the banks and Hunter's Point South Park playground give a rather welcoming impression. However, you need to remember that Newtown Creek was designated a Superfund. The compounds in the water here pose serious potential risk to humans and the ecosystem. Hence, warnings have been posted in the area, advising visitors not to eat fish, or shellfish from the creek. Swimming or wading is forbidden, and boaters are advised to bathe after spending time on the water. Anyhow, by the time you reach the Pulaski Bridge, the vibe starts to change. You'll pass some moored recreational boats, and then you'll be met with a mix of warehouses and post-industrial fixtures. And the Long Island City Terminal can be found here as a freight train slowly decays not far away. Wales Creek now has a few recreational boats and a nature walk, starkly contrasting the putrid waters in Dutch kills. Follow the creek beyond Kosciuszko Bridge and you'll dead end at Maspeth Creek, or you could take the creek to its conclusion, where the water indeed looks extremely disconcerting. 
And although some New Yorkers are optimistic about the future of this toxic waterway, I can't help but notice that all the industries unfolding here were both demanded and consumed by the public at large, making it extremely difficult to know just where we should point the finger. I'd be curious to hear your assessment in the comments section below. Now this is not the first controversial topic we've covered on New York. People were outraged by my video about the history of tourism in the Big Apple. If you'd like to find out why, click this link and see for yourself. Otherwise, a huge thanks to our friend Max Tui for providing the drone footage in this episode. And until next time, I'm Ryan Sokash, signing off.